So on the profile, you're going to list parent information and you're actually going to report all parents of the student. So that includes biological adoptive parents and then any step parents. So there might be up to four. If there's a divorce situation, both parents are remarried, you might be listing four parents. Even if a parent has passed away, go ahead and list that parent and you'll have the option to indicate that that parent has passed away. For every parent, you're going to have to list a date of birth and an email address, so make sure you have all of that before you begin. If there's a legal guardian situation where the student has a legal guardian, the legal guardian is actually going to act as the parent and put in their information as the parent. That is different than on the FAFSA. If I'm a student and I am in legal guardianship on the FAFSA, I actually am what's called an independent student and I don't have to list any parent information and I just list my own. On the CSS profile, I'm going to list my legal guardian as my parent. If I'm a student and my parents are divorced or separated, we need to determine as a family who's my custodial parent and who's my non-custodial parent. And just like the FAFSA, the custodial parent is going to be the one who provided the most support to me as the student in the previous 12 months. So my parents are divorced. I live with both about half time, but I feel like my mom probably provides most of my financial support. She pays for most things takes care of a lot of my expenses. So I'm going to decide my mom is my custodial parent. And so as that, my mom, and if she's remarried, let's say she's remarried to my stepdad, my mom, my stepdad, and I are going to fill out my profile. We're still going to list my dad and my stepmom. Let's say my dad's remarried. We're still going to list their names on the profile, but really my custodial parent, my mom, her current spouse, my stepdad, and I are going to fill out the profile. Some schools, not all, but some schools that require the profile also require a non-custodial profile to be filled out. So in my case, that would be my dad. My dad might have to fill out his own profile. We'll talk about that um, in a little bit, but that's going to be a requirement. You can check the school's financial aid webpage to find if that is really required, but that's something to note. And if I'm a student who, again, has this divorce or separated parent situation, I'm going to list my non-custodial parent's email address and profile is going to send an invitation to that parent to ask him or her to fill out the profile. So in my example, I'm going to put my dad's email address, profile is going to email him and say, your daughter is filling out a profile and you need to fill out a separate profile. And on the right hand side here, you can just see a listing of how the profile actually indicates. So it'll list all the parents that you've put on the application and then it'll say, which ones are gonna fill out this profile? Really, who did you decide is the custodial parent? Is there a current spouse? And you'll check those people off. Sometimes non-custodial parent information is not available. So maybe I'm in a situation where I have a non-custodial parent. I, I know he's alive or she's alive, but for some reason that person cannot fill out the profile there's going to be some questions that I can answer as the student. And that's going to be, is the non-custodial parent deceased? Maybe that parent has passed away. Unknown. I'm not sure who it is. Incarcerated. There's a legal order against this person. Or it, it could also be that I don't really have a non-custodial parent. Maybe I was adopted by a single parent or conceived by a single parent, or I, I'm just really not in touch with that custodial parent. He might exist. I don't, I don't know. I'm not even sure where he or she is. So in that, if that's the case, I'm going to answer these questions to let the profile know that I really can't provide non-custodial information. Based on the answers I provide, that requirement might be removed. But if it's still required, if the profile and my colleges are still saying, no, we really need non-custodial parent information, there's a chance for me to go on and send a waiver request. And there's a profile page where you can actually fill out a form. It's also good to communicate with the college. If they're saying, we need your profile from your non-custodial parent, and I can't provide that for whatever reason, I need to communicate that to the school and find out what the school needs. Do they want you to fill out a waiver request form? Do they just want a letter or an email? Explain your situation, and then they'll make a decision whether they can waive that requirement. So as the non-custodial parent, let's say in my example that I gave, that was my dad. I'm going to give his email address. He's going to get an email saying, go ahead and submit a profile. It's gonna be separate from the one that my mom and I fill out. So he has his own profile. He's gonna to go to the same website. He's gonna create his own account. So he needs to create a student account under his name, kind of go through that confusing process. 
I'm going to have assigned to me what's called a CB FinAid ID. This is just my ID number that was assigned to me when I started my profile as a student. That'll be in the email that is sent to my dad. So he'll take that ID number, he'll fill it in. And that's what's going to tie his profile to mine behind the scenes. When he fills out my non-custodial dad, when he fills out his profile, he doesn't have to repeat my information, my income, and my assets as a student. He's just providing his information. He doesn't have to list the colleges where I'm applying. I already put that on my profile. He's just going to submit his profile with his own financial information. And he can't really fill that out until I've started my process. So if you're a non-custodial parent on the webinar right now and you're thinking, I want to get a jump on this, your student really has to start the process, invite you, and then you can do your profile. And again, if I'm, if I'm a parent who's doing two separate profiles for two different students, I'm going to need two separate accounts. And just a note that custodial parents and the student, that profile and the non-custodial parent, they can't see each other's information. So there's, there's no way the non-custodial parent will see the custodial parent information or vice versa.